All right, so for those of you who attempted this activity, the answer to number one would be $270.94. That would be the least expensive option for a 43-year-old male earning $70,000. And for number two, it would be the Sendero Gold Plan, and it would cost $354.97. And you could have made life a little easier on yourself with number two by using the filter option and filtering for a zero deductible plan. But you also could have scrolled for the, through the options until you saw that zero deductible. If you had any difficulty with this, we of course will walk you through it in person. I want to add too is you may be using the 27, well, I am using the 2017 calculator to look these up because at the moment there isn't anything available for 2018. And at the moment is October 24th. So the 2018 plans will be released closer to the November 1st rollout. Okay, so just to review. An offer is going to be considered unaffordable if it's above 9.56%, but if it's equal or lower than that, it would be considered affordable. However, a consumer may be exempt from the penalty if the cost to be on that plan would be 8.05% or greater. So again, it's important to be aware of those two matrices. I've charted that in this next slide that up until that five, 956, it's still affordable, which, which can kick the family and the employee out of eligibility for subsidies. But again, they may not have to take that offer if it's above 8.05%. They won't be fined if it's above 8.05%. There are certain types of coverage that are not impacted by this rule. Student insurance, for example, does not kick someone out of eligibility for marketplace subsidies. COBRA, which continues your benefits from a job, does not kick you out of eligibility for the subsidy. You can either go with COBRA or go on to the marketplace with subsidies. Retirement insurance also does not kick you out of eligibility, you or your spouse, but again, it's often usually understood as a benefit for the consumer eligible for it and most people don't tend to go to the marketplace if they have that retirement insurance offer. An offer to an unmarried domestic partner or adult child does not kick someone out of eligibility for marketplace subsidies unless they're a member of your tax household. So depending on how they appear as a member of your your taxes will influence whether or not they're impacted by that offer of coverage and we'll assist with that. And of course, while an employer may extend an offer of coverage to a consumer's spouse and is required by law to extend that offer to a consumer's dependents, it would be pretty much unheard of to see that offer extended to an employee's elderly parents. So they would still be eligible for subsidies on the marketplace, and that's sometimes something we assist with. So taking a look at how to notate this on the tracking sheet, obviously if there's no employer, if the consumer is self-employed, unemployed, or retired, we don't have to worry as much about an offer of coverage. So that kind of enables you to skip that step if it's possible. And we do work a lot with a lot of self-employed people. So again, if you're working with someone in that category, you do not have to worry about vetting an offer of coverage because there's no employer. For consumers who do have an employer, you would want to write the name of the employer on that line and then use the available boxes to indicate whether there's an offer or no offer, what the status of that employee is, if they're full-time, part-time, seasonal, or temporary. And then if you vet it as inadequate or unaffordable, you can indicate that as well. A likely scenario sometimes is that a consumer won't have sufficient information for us to know exactly what the employer coverage situation is. So we may be trying to call an employer and not successful. We may give a letter to the employee to take it to their HR rep and bring us back more information. And there's a box to indicate that as well. If we're looking on the resource page, that first option is a tool to calculate the affordability of empl an employer offer of coverage and also a script to talk to an HR representative about the employer coverage, so how we could ask questions. There's another script as well for con explaining this to consumers. Uh, the link for seeing plans before I apply, which I showed a bit earlier, and then that HR letter, which can be printed and sent away with the consumer up until the 27th 
of November, which is when we will enroll people and send them away with a different letter encouraging them to figure out what the situation is and return to us so that if it turns out they're uneligible for subsidies, we will figure that out after open enrollment. I'm also going to show you the very, very first tool that was listed on the resource page, that first step here, the how-to, just to give you a sense of how to use this. So you can see that you're initially going to calculate what the total annual cost would be of the least expensive plan that meets the minimum value standard just for the employee. Underneath that on line B, there's, an, there's a space to calculate the entire tax household income for 2018. You would then divide the cost of that plan, the annual cost, by the entire tax household income and then multiply it by 100. And that will give you the percentage of the household income that that employee offered plan will cost which will tell you whether or not it's affordable. If you look further down that page, you'll see we are also giving the information connected to whether it's affordable for the spouse and the dependents, but of course, that's less important. And what tends to be more important there is figuring out if the spouse and dependents will be fined for not accepting that offer, because whether or not the offer is affordable does not affect their eligibility for the subsidy. The only person who's affordability is important in terms of subsidies is the employee. So do be aware of that if you're explaining that information to a consumer.